Hey everyone, Vinayak here. Protecting our data is very important and I have a Seagate 16TB expansion drive to keep my data safe. I also need tons of space to store my footage and also work off. I don't want to use the expansion drive to edit as I would like to keep it as a backup drive only. To solve both my space and speed problems, I have purchased this NAS, the Synology DS920 Plus to be exact. So let's unbox it, set it up and test it out. The DS920 Plus is a middle tier NAS from Synology aimed at small to mid-sized businesses or SMB. The NAS weighs around 2.2 kilos or 4.9 pounds. It has four drive bays which would allow for a maximum of 64 terabytes of storage. There are bigger drives available now in 18 and 20 TB capacities. They might also work. I have this new 4 TB Iron Wolf drive which is going to be a backup drive as I have to move data off my PC before I can pull the other 4TB drives out. Opening up the box we have, hmm, this is a spacer, accessories box which contains the power adapter, two ethernet cables, drive bay keys, screws if you want to mount 2.5 inch drives and oh, the plug is 15 amps. But as it uses a standard PC connector, I can use a 10 amp one instead. But that's something you need to keep in mind if you don't have extra power cables lying around. Another spacer and here is the NAS. A NAS is basically a computer with its own OS to help set up and use drives as storage. Here we are. These are the four drive bays which take up most of the front. These are hot swappable but it's best to take the drives offline before changing or adding them so as to not lose data. A USB 3.0 port can be found in front. Under that, we have a backlit power button and 5 LED indicators for the system status and drive activity. Each side has the Synology logo. On the back, we find 2 Gigabit Ethernet ports, an eSATA port, a reset button and a power port can be also found at the back. A second USB 3.0 port, a Kensington lock, two big fans. On the bottom, we have the NVMe SSD cache which allows for speeding up the reading and writing of data to the hard drives. They open up like this and we can install the M.2 drives within. This is how the drive bays slide out. And when you remove the last one, we can see the RAM upgrade slot within. Removing all the drive sleds, we can see the insides. It's quite simple in design. We have the HDD connectors at the back and the top houses the CPU and the rest of the motherboard. The DS920 Plus is powered by a quad-core 2 GHz Intel Celeron J4125 processor and has 4 GB of DDR4 RAM which is soldered onto the motherboard and it can be expanded to 8 GB by using this slot provided. We can upgrade either using Synology RAM or other compatible RAM which are SODIMM sticks. I will be upgrading the NAS later. Let's install the 4 TB hard drive into the NAS so I can start backing up the data. Follow the instructions in the manual and add the drive to the sled. The side rails come off, allowing us to place the hard drive within and then add the rails back. Quite simple. This is the Seagate Iron Wolf drive which are generally targeted to NASIS. Slide it into the drive bay, make sure to align the rails properly and that's it. The drive is installed. Now using the power adapter, let's power the NAS on. Connect the power cable to the back of the drive. Connect the Ethernet cables. The inbuilt Ethernet is only 1 Gbps, but it does support link aggregation if your switch supports it. Tap on the power button and it's now booting into DSM or Synology's Disk Station Manager. It goes through the memory checks and initializes the hard drives. We can see the status and drive 1 LEDs flash. The other LEDs are not flashing as we have only one drive installed. On your PC, open up your browser and type in finds.synology.com. Follow the instructions and install the Disk Station Manager. It will be using Disk 1 for installation and all data will be deleted. As this is a new drive, it's anyway empty. The NAS is now automatically restarting. It has installed DSM 7.1 which is the latest version. Name your device and create your accounts. Create a Synology account if you need web-based access, it's not mandatory. And we are in. The NAS has a very intuitive GUI based interface and is easy to navigate through and also set up your drives. When you first launch DSM, it's populated with icons labeled Control Panel, File Station, Package Center and Help. 
to the bottom right is a system health window that displays CPU and RAM usage. You can populate the desktop with more icons as you download apps. To download apps, tap the package center icon where you'll find a catalog of more than 100 apps that allow you to use the DS920 Plus in different ways. A few examples include file management and migration utilities, surveillance apps, backup and restore apps, development tools, multimedia server apps, security apps, VPN server apps, and even email server apps. Use the control panel to assign user rights, create shared folders, configure network settings, and block IP addresses. You can also adjust fan speed settings, enable email and push messages, and configure desktop themes. Go to the file station to access and move files, modify file structures, and edit file attributes and privileges. To view tutorials and search for help topics, tap on the help icon. There's a main menu button on the upper left corner, which gives you access to the storage manager utility, which allows you to create and delete volumes, monitor individual drive health, create storage pools, configure the M.2 SSD cache, and pre-configure hot spare drives. You'll also find icons for resource manager, which are detailed system usage statistics, log center, which are admin logs, universal search, which will allow you to search through all the folders and drives and files, and security advisor for scanning for malware and checking the password strength and checking for new updates. Let's set up the storage pools. I'm using the Synology hybrid RAID file system. Follow instructions, next, and volume one is ready. I'm naming this drive share as backup. Access the drive as a network drive on your Windows system, enter the credentials, and now the task of backing up the files on this drive starts. Tons of files to copy from the two 4TB drives within the PC. Once the files finish copying, now to get those 4TB drives out of my desktop. Hmm, I had one Barracuda drive. I thought both of them were Ironwolf drives. Drive 1 installed. And here's drive 2. The disks can be locked down using the keys provided. It's only a protection against accidental removal and not protect against theft. I've also installed a cache drive, which is this crucial P5 NVMe SSD. Yes, it's overkill, but that's the smallest SSD I have. The two hard drives will be set up as RAID 0 for maximum performance, as two drives will act as one. This is going to be my main editing drive. The Barracuda drive is not recommended by Synology, but I'm using it for now. I'm setting the write cache to the NVMe SSD installed and linking it to volume 2 or the RAID 0 drives. I will purchase another 500 GB NVMe to enable read write caching. Set up a share. Provide necessary permissions. Drive is now ready and accessible via Windows network. Speeds via the NAS is around 116 Mbps, which is through a network and it is fine enough for editing 4K video. Blackmagic's disk speed test shows around 110.4 Mbps for write and read. In real-world editing, this is how the drives perform. This is a single clip. These are two 4K clips. And these are four 4K clips. These are the speeds we get when copying files between the two drives within the NAS. I got a max of around 175 Mbps and the lows were around 150 Mbps. To shut down using the web interface, just go to the top right, select shutdown, and the NAS would gracefully shut down. To shut it down via the button, just hold down the button for a few seconds until it beeps, and it shuts down instead of just turning off suddenly. Make sure you wait for all the lights to go out before turning the power off. The Synology Distation DS920 Plus is a solid choice for home power users and SMBs that need a small, well-performing NAS device on-premises, particularly one that they can expand as their storage needs grow. And what I like about the DS920 Plus is the small size, the Synology software, and ease of setup. And with scores of apps that allow it to automatically back up for your data, perform a multitude of other tasks is a plus. On the physical side, it's quiet, it performed well, 
in my file transfer test. I had set up my own NAS via TrueNAS using an older computer hardware. Yeah, I would choose the DS920 Plus as it's a no-brainer. The disk station is more expensive for lower level specs, but just look at how nice it looks. If you want to build one of your own, check out this tutorial I had released earlier. So what are your thoughts on the Synology DS920 Plus? Is it worth it? Make sure to comment below. So that was the video. Make sure to like, subscribe and also hit the notification bell to be notified when new videos are added. Thank you for watching and see you all next time.